Welcome to the homepage of the Knighthood of the Academic Art of Writing. I'll begin with explaining the name of the Knighthood. So actually we are not really a Knighthood. It comes from the German word Ritter, which is very close to Reiter. Uh, a Reiter is a horseman, it's an educator of horses. But the word has been used very mixed and even the Knighthood is actually a Reiter Sumpft. A Sumpft is a Gilde. It is an organization of handcraft. So earlier these handcrafts educating horses were organized and they could go from court to court educate horses where they came and in periods there will be a lot of youngsters for example to ride in one place and when all the horses were ridden they could go to another place and continue. So we don't really know how old the organization is, but of course we know that there have been professional riders educated in horses for higher purposes since the time of Xenophon. Xenophon is describing how to make a contract with a professional rider and how to tell how you want your horse to be educated. And he tells, do a contract as if you would send your son to the academy to an education. So these professional riders have made horses for higher purposes through all history. We don't really know where it begins. I took over the knighthood from Egon von Neindorf and he was the last one who were in the old knighthood. On that time the level were higher and we couldn't really keep the level. So we discussed where to put the, li uh, the level and where to start it. So he said you must have some basic we call it squire, that is a typical name for being in a knighthood, but um, in Germany we might call it a Geselle, that is a handcraft, still not being owner of the shop, is still not being the one managing himself, being the manager himself, but just the one doing the handcraft employed there. So what do we expect for squire? What is the level where a squire must be? So we put in a level and said this is where we start. Now we couldn't expect that time develop things so well. So the level has really come up. So we had just to say, no, we are not satisfied with the level we had before. We want a little to put up the lower level. And we have made a very good basic education test, the groundwork and launch test, where you show that you can handle the tools. What are the tools of a professional rider? So start with having good groundwork and good launching. So we have this groundwork launching test. On that basic we have a squire test. The squire test is a test on aid. What are the aids of a rider? We have legs, we have rein, we have the hand, but in the academic art of riding the seat is the primary aid. So the squire test, of course the horse must do the exercises, but what is tested is that all the aids are well given and that the horse understand the communication. So for some handcrafts a hammer might be a tool, but if you only have a hammer you will see every problem as being a nail, which is not the case in all problems. So therefore it's important that you can handle all these tools and you can decide when you have a house for education what tool to, to uh, use. In the case of a test you take any horse, whatever you have, and start to train yourself. And that is an important thing and important difference from the modern knighthood to the old knighthood. In the old knighthood you had to make a horse for purpose for war or for a hunt. And if you could not use the horse for the war, the educator didn't succeed. Nowadays we have no purpose with riding anymore. Our purpose is to bring humans and horses together and teach them how to communicate. And this communication with as little conflict as possible that the horse understand what you want and that you want things which is useful for this horse. So your duty is to keep the horse healthy from body and mind. The nature of the horse is what you should look at, says Xenophon already in the 4th century before Christ. So if you can understand the nature of this horse and keep a good biomechanic, keep a healthy movement, clean gates. And an exercise that cannot keep the clean gate is an anti-exercise. You must be able to even 
not even keep the clean gates, we even try to develop them to be even better, build up the body of the horse to have more capacity, so much more capacity that it can keep the clean gates even when you're sitting on it. A squire is therefore a good handcraft and therefore we have taken up and seeing that we will honor people making a good handcraft that we put them equal to the knighthood with the knight. A knight can do a little more but you might be a squire not owning a very good horse and therefore you would be limited to, the, um, to that horse. Therefore the squire and the groundwork test is something you can do with almost any horse. It's just you who must be very good. And not every horse can become a night horse because we want more collection even in canter where we can do a canter pirouette and all the exercises in canter. Therefore a squire is free, for example, to make a piaf proof. This horse might never be able to do a good canter, but it might be able to do a piaf or someday a levade. So it's important that we respect the nature and this horse and if the horse can never get to that level, be happy of a good basic horse. Then you have done a good job keeping this horse healthy for a long time. But if the horse have capacity for more, you have the tools to make more, to make ring tests, like canter test, like piaf test, passage test, levard and so on, even the jumps, or a knight test. If you are a knight, you are quite close to a working equitation level, not only you, but also your horse, that you can turn it in really school canter, not only turning in a campagna canter, but even in a school canter, which is the basic, an old German word for collection is wendig. That means turnable that the horse is easy turnable, that it get light shoulder, that you therefore can turn it light. That is a night level. The master level, you can do all uh, exercises on the ground, Piaf, Passas and collection, even towards the half high school. The master level, that is where the old knighthood had the lowest level. That was the introduction to the old knighthood. So therefore we are a new knighthood trying to keep the old traditions, but turning the old traditions into what we can use today. We don't, luckily, we don't have to go into war with horses. Uh, we have another purpose for horses. We are integrating horses in our life as a family member and we want to have quality time together with that horse. Therefore, it's not the fastest education we go for, it's spending time well and keeping a good development of body and mind. Therefore, be careful not to be too interested just in doing the exercises, doing that they are useful for that horse that you have and respect the limit of that horse. So, being a member of the knighthood, being yourself a very, very good educator and rider of your horses. And then, if you get better, you might even be able to educate even more difficulty horses. Then you might be able to take a higher degree and show that you are able to educate horses to such a degree. And therefore, even on the top of the mastership, there are the schools above the ground. And then we are close actually coming to where the old masters showed us things that we are still not able to do. Therefore is the reason to have a knighthood is to have a brain pool. We are coming together in a brain pool where we speak about the exercises that we are still not able to do and try to do them so that they do not harm the horse, that they have a purpose even for now. Therefore, let's take the best out of the past, let's try to develop it for now, that there's a reason for having it in the future.